An off season that felt a little bit too long is finally over. It's We Are SM Hoops basketball and We Are SM Hoops YouTube Live. Chris Ferendorf to my left, Alex Coyle back for another season. And Chris, uh, of course, you, when you look at the team, a lot of the guys uh, graduated last year. Yep. Uh, a lot of new faces on this year's team, and it's going to be a completely different style. Yeah, well, four seniors graduated, like you mentioned, but not only that, they were four key players on the same year's team for a long time. Garrison Phelps, Jeremiah Cherry, Fune DeCorey, and Jacob Estrella. Those are, uh, you know, it's not easy to replace those types of players, especially in high school ball. So... There will be a lot of fresh faces out there, and we'll be sure to let you all know who is out on the court for St. Mary's at all times tonight. A constant, though, and maybe taking more of a leadership role this season is Styles Phipps, a junior. He just keeps getting better and better. Oh, man, yeah. So rated the 25th best point guard in his class from ESPN. Um, he's got offers from so many places, and he's going to continue to get offers during the season. But, man, he is going to do a lot for the St. Mary's Knights team. And like you mentioned, Alex, leadership-wise, He's going to be expected to take a, take that to the next level this season. Of course, opening up this season here at Notre Dame Prep, a team that already has one game under its belt, a 1-0 record. What can we expect from them? Yeah, well, they, they actually play really fast, too, like St. Mary's, and they like to get the ball up and down the court. They have Anthony Batson Jr., who is their number one player. He has probably close to 10 offers as well, just a junior, and he's high-flying dunker. Um, you know, some have compared him almost to Garrison Phelps in that sense, so... I'd love to see his athleticism on display tonight, and hopefully um, if they're playing that fast pace, we'll see it. Uh, something that'll help that fast pace, of course, last time these two teams met, there was a little bit of uh, stalling going on. Yeah. There won't be any of that yeah. today. 35-second no. shot clock this whole season. What do you think of that? Yeah, well, that's going to be interesting, and I think that'll benefit both teams throughout the season if they're both going to try to put up, like Coach Lopez said, 90-plus points a game is his goal for the St. Mary's Knights team. So they are going to be lightning quick. That's what I'm expecting them out the gate, and for some of these teams that like to slow the ball down, maybe even stall, as some would say, um, they're just not going to be able to have that opportunity versus St. Mary's Knights team that likes to get out and run. Expect a lot of speed, a lot of pressing, and a lot of three-point shooting from this 2022-2023 St. Mary's Knights basketball team. We'll be back for uh, tip, starting lineups, and much more right here on Where Has Some Hoops YouTube Live.
for the opening prayer, followed by the national anthem. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, let me play well but fairly. Let competition make me strong but never hostile. Forbid me to rejoice in the adversity of others. See me not when I am cheered, but when I bend to help my opponent up. If I know victory, allow me to be happy. If I am denied, keep me from envy. Remind me that sports are just games. Help me to learn something that matters once the game is over. And if through athletics I set an example, let it be a good one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mary, patroness of Notre Dame, pray for us. Please remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. Knights of St. Mary's is announced by head coach David Lopez. Number zero, Aaron Pastrup. Number one, Styles Pitt. Number two, Anthony Masile. Number three, Kenny White. And number 20, AJ Muangulo. Just about time for basketball here in Scottsdale. Notre Dame prep the opening game of this 2022-2023 season for the Knights. Again, alongside Chris Ferrandorf, I'm Alex Coyle. Plenty of new faces to go through, Chris. We'll start with that starting lineup. We know Styles Phipps and Kenny White. We'll also have Aaron Estrada, a returner from a year ago. Anthony Maciel in there as well with A.J. Wundumba. Actually, yes, he, he'll be out there too. So we'll have uh, some, some new new role players here getting some playing time to start things off. And the opening tip is won by Notre Dame Prep. Brennan Peterson with the basketball. He's got an offer from the University of Oregon, Chris. Yep. 
Old drive baseline, they'll kick out for three, Quinnette. That'll rattle in and out, caught by Estrada. Quinnette's not gonna miss open looks like that too often. Styles Phipps gets hit, poop and the harm. What a way on the first offensive possession, Styles three and one more. I mean, here's the thing, Alex, he might just do that every single play <laughs> down the court this, in, in tonight's game because like you, you, we mentioned in the in the pregame show, four guys, four key guys on this Knights team all graduated, and you know they all probably averaged besides Fune last year, somewhere between eight and fifteen points a game. Garrison Phelps and Jeremiah Cherry being the two, um, you know, biggest pieces, obviously missing from this team. There was some conversation with uh, Notre Dame prep head coach Luke Delareva on whether that was a two or a three. They give him a three, he of course hits the free throw. Four nothing, St. Mary's the lead here early and they go to that pressure, Chris. Yep, here's that press and Notre Dame is going to be tested the entirety of the game if they can break it easily. They break it early, cut the deficit in half, but it's about what they're gonna have to deal with that all game long and I think they're going to call an offensive foul on Styles Phipps a little out of control into the lane. And that's an early one Alex and that's one that this St. Mary's Knights team cannot afford. If Styles Phipps gets in foul trouble early that is you know bad news for this team and to put it lightly. Yeah and that's one of those fouls though Chris that if we're playing college basketball or in the NBA that's in the restricted circle so that's defensive automatically. Rebound now, Kenny White can head the other way, find Styles. he's picked up by Will Fiegel. They get some ball movement here. Dribble handoff, Styles. double team for three, falls down again, no call, he missed the shot. As they go up, but uh, catching his own rebound, the only miss was Fiegel's. I got Batson Jr., he'll drive, he'll find a friend and laying it in. Is Brendan Peterson for two, tied at four. Peterson, Quinette, and Batson Jr. That's the three guys you have to key in for if you're St. Mary's on defense. And it looks like we're going to have a moving screen. They're going to call that one on Aaron Estrada. That'll be the second foul on St. Mary's. Estrada's first. First, the Knights' first game, the Saints of Notre Dame prep, game number two. They got a very solid win last time out. 90 to 75 over Casa Grande. Everything out along the perimeter, looking for three, and that ball is gonna go off the back rim, no good. Shot by Peterson. St. Mary's looks to run. Styles, they get a screen, knifing through the lane, took too many steps. That's going to be interesting. If that's one of those that's going to be called by a high school officiating all year, it's going to be tough. Yeah, and, and Styles Phipps, he works on his footwork constantly in the offseason, so it's going to be a surprise to him as well whenever he travels. Batson Jr. working on Mundumba. He drives baseline, dishes, finds a teammate, and laying it in. It's Tim Matura, Jr., 6'3". Kenny White, corner three. That's going to hit back iron no good. And a tip out of bounds with Steen with St. Mary's. Again, looking at uh, spreading the floor and, and getting down the floor quickly. He got down there really two seconds after that made basket on the other end. Yeah, and uh, apologies as our scoreboard does not seem to be hooked up correctly. But 6-4 to four right now to Not Notre Dame. That'll be an air ball. That's a junior run down by Kenny White. Took a hard fall. They're going to call the foul on Kenny, but they got to look to make sure he's okay. Now, he's a guy that, you know, he's going to play a massive role on this team. He had a tremendous summer, numerous games over 20 points, a, a big key guard figure for this team. And he's going to be asked to, to be a primary ball handler as well. He's going to have to take the load off of Styles Phipps at times during the season. That's a junior back down to the corner. Peterson drives on White, back out, along the three-point line, driving middle, and a reverse style layup there by Matura. He's been open in the lane numerous times. He hits again. Styles falls down. He's scrummed for the ball. Hands everywhere. No whistles yet. Styles still has it somehow and calls a timeout. 
And Coach Lopez is going to have a conversation with the officiating. Again, the score is 8-4 to four in favor of Notre Dame Prep. It was a 4-0 St. Mary's lead. Remember, only basket that St. Mary's has made was the and-1-3 from Styles to start the game. Yep, and that's what's going to be interesting this season, Alex, is if this Knights team can get anyone going um, offensively, you know, currently right now, Saidu Tambora is, is not, not eligible to play. Uh, you know, a, a new sophomore who goes by cash is also um, recovering from an undisclosed injury slash illness and not eligible. And then, you know, P.J. Lewis coming back from football. So this St. Mary's Knights team is definitely not at full strength for their first game of the season, which is you know, not something you usually see happen. And everybody you just listed expected to be back ready for every other game this season. Correct. White will inbound from that side. He'll find Styles. Again, the shot clock, 25 seconds and counting. Has not been an issue yet today. Of course, St. Mary's doesn't want to shoot anything really with inside of 10 seconds. Styles almost lost the dribble, picks it back up, stops at the three-point line. They're going to head to the corner for a three, and cashing that one out is Jonah Bellison, his first looks. Yep, he's just a sophomore, a, another small, crap, uh, excuse me, scrappy player, kind of like Kenny White. And he gets called for a blocking foul down low, but that stroke looked good out there in the corner. Well, and something you're going to have to watch for as well this season, Alex, is if teams attack the paint nonstop versus this Knights team, you know, obviously I know I just mentioned that Seydoux, Tambor, and, and Cash are not playing in this game. They're both listed above 6'6", six, six, so that just that, that anchor on defense that Jeremiah Cherry was for this team is, is currently... That's what this team's missing right now versus Notre Dame. Bryce Quinnett, he's at the free throw line, missed the first. Eight to seven the score. There's four minutes and 37 seconds left in this first quarter. We'll try to update that scoreboard for you when we can. Second free throw attempt from the line. Back iron, no good. Fight for the rebound. Scrum, and that is going to stay here. Off of A.J. Mundumba and out of bounds. That can't happen. You know, Knights have four guys in there boxing out to Notre Dame's two, especially after two misses. Peterson inbounds, and that's going to be laid in. Again, Bryce Quinnett, another one of those good sophomore guards. He's six foot one. Back down the floor quickly. Kenny White open for three. Another back guy, and he's a little too strong on those two attempts he's had so far. Hounding foul, and I believe that's going to be number two on Kenny White. Yep, it is, Alex. And that's also the fifth foul on the Knights. Five on the Knights and one on the Saints. 4.21 left on the clock. Still 10 to 7. Picking him up full court. Bellison hit that three. A little crossover move. Stops, turns around, finds a man up top. That's Quinette for three. Rattles home. 13-7, St. Mary's going to push, one-handed pass, Bellison on the wing, that one is going to be too long, fighting for the rebound, that's going to go to Batson Jr., he finds a corner, Pastorino a little too long, Styles showing off that strength with the rebound. Crossover, right at top of the key, he'll step back, good backdoor cut by White. That stuff is going to be key, especially if he's not going to be able to hit that corner three to start at least. Well, and they've got a chemistry going since this summer, Alex, that is something special. Those two guards played so much time together, of course. Yeah, I was going to say, how's that not a travel? Too many steps. Turnover for Peterson. I'm kind of surprised, Alex, that Notre Dame has not gotten the ball into Anthony Batson Jr.'s hands you know, quite as often as I thought they would early on. Ellison into the corner. Mundumbo looking for three. That one's way long. Rebound, scrummed around, Stafford, and going to get a foul. I'm not sure who that's going to be on, if that's Kenny. It is. That's his third foul. Still here, just quarter one. Coach Lopez upset with that. Now he's looking to his bench. He'll get Aaron Estrada into the game. And, Alex, that's just not a foul you can afford to take, especially if you're Kenny White. You know the bench is, is pretty short right now. Especially that far away from the basket. Even if it's a 50-50 call, a little too over-aggressive. Trying to get it in. Nice Quinnette, will settle things down. Four point game, it's 13 to nine. Three minutes to go, quarter one. 
Quinnette now finds Batson Jr. Back to Quinnette, guarded by Styles Phipps. Into the corner, dribble drive, and again another good ball movement here, I should say, for Notre Dame Prep, but that's rebounded by Estrada. Styles looking to push. 2.45 left, quarter one. Drives with his right. Between his legs, he's being doubled. Batson Jr. went for the home run interception. Instead, good ball movement for three. That's going to rattle home. Anthony Maciel, his first action, rattles home a three. It's a one-point game. And so far, no one on this team has been afraid to take a corner three for St. Mary's. Out of bounds. Great job to cut off the baseline drive. Defense that time from Bellison creates a turnover. And now look where he is, Chris. He's hiding in that corner. They haven't looked at him yet, but now... Interestingly enough, Notre Dame Prep going to get into a full court, court press. Looking to trap, get it to that corner. Now listen, cross-court pass, little, little advice there. Styles pulls up for three, that's short. Gets his own miss into the lane, fakes one and gets hacked. And yeah, I'm not sure how you can say that's all ball. Quinnette, a foul on him. Just foul number two on the Saints, Chris. Well, Notre Dame, they've, they've done a good job. You know, obviously coming into this game, you know who Styles Phipps is, but... The Saints have done a, a tremendous job of sending two defenders at him and forcing the ball out of his hands as quickly as possible. Two for two for the line to start the season for Styles. Game tied at 13 to 11 left, first quarter. Styles another free throw. That one's off to the side of the iron. And rebound to Notre Dame Prep. Peterson picked up by Styles, back up top. Quinnette, little floater too short, fight for the rebound. Continued to be tipped around, back to Quinnette, somehow gets his own miss. Dribble back out to the three-point line. Posterino back to him. Hard by Mundumba, dribble handoff. Good defense by St. Mary's to stay in front. Quinnette for three, back iron, didn't even hit it, hit the backboard. Miles fits for the basketball tie game. A chance for St. Mary's to take its second lead of the game. Block and, yep, clear foul. Styles splitting the double team. They're doubling him quite a bit, sometimes even three guys on him at once. Yeah, and that's just what you have to do, especially with a St. Mary's team that is so far unproven. You're not totally sure who's going to step up, especially with Kenny White having to sit on the bench for an extended period of time. Gwinnett will sit down for Notre Dame prep. Ellison will inbound. Set a screen for Styles. Phipps will get it into him. A double screen for him indeed. Gets a third one with the ball in his hand. Picks it to the corner. Bellison for three. That's way long. Matson Jr. going to try to push on the far sideline. Guarded by Mundumba. Takes it all the way. Foul called. Little harm on the way up. And he'll get two free throws. And might I say Anthony Batson Jr. kind of reminds me of a an older A.J. Mwandumba. He seems to be all athleticism out there, putting his body on the line to go up and get fouled there. 6'4", Junior makes the first free throw. Ton of offers for him. ASU, Nevada, Santa Barbara, San Diego, San Jose State, and Rice. Of course, 18 points per game last year as a sophomore will do that. Two of the top 10 players, according to Richard Obert's preseason top 50. Phipps and Batson Jr. Corner three, Mundumba hits backboard. Maciel gets away with an over the back. We'll play on. Minute nine to go, 15-13 in favor of the Saints. Into the corner for three. That's for an iron, no good. Styles Phipps tries to draw a foul. Good pass, but they're going to call a charge. Another one on Styles Phipps, and that is the eighth team foul. Still 54 seconds here, quarter one. And here's the unfortunate thing, Alex, and that's going to bother me is it's the ref who is not underneath the basket making that Furthest call. Furthest away from the call, Exactly. Indeed. Peterson dribbles it over the timeline. Diving baseline, and they're going to call it carry. That's on number 10, Brody Pustorino. He's a six-foot freshman. Maybe NBA rules have transferred over, Alex, and cracking down <laughs> on that carry. I see how he's hit a three. Picks up his dribble before a dribble handoff with Styles. Styles gets open. He's doubled into the corner. They're going to call a foul, just number four. That prevents the drive. 
St. Mary's will inbound with 26 seconds left, and that'll reset the shot clock and mean no more shot clock for the rest of this first quarter. Now I must say, Alex, since Aaron Estrada's come into the game, he has made a difference in the paint. The Saints of Notre Dame have not been able to score as easily. Styles, he's getting hounded out there. That's Fiegel's guarding him. Hangs up there and a little floater touch there in the middle of the lane. Ties us up at 15. 13 to go in this first quarter. Dribble drive, three steps and a layup. Peterson, four seconds now. Styles trying to give St. Mary's a tie maybe before the buzzer. Did he get it off? No, he didn't. After one period, Chris, it's 17-15 really quick before we take a quick break. Yeah, Alex, I mean, I, I like what I've seen out of this Knights team, you know, especially because you're just not totally sure who is going to provide what with so many new faces on the squad. But like you said, we're going to take a quick break, try to figure out this scoreboard. We'll be back with you. Just in time for the second quarter. Scoreboard back in action momentarily, or at least for the moment, I should say. 17-15, Knights will start with the basketball. I mean, Styles Phipps with it in his hand. He'll drive, stop at the elbow. A little too long there. Right for the rebound, and that's going to be a foul. That's again on Bellison, and a one-and-one one coming. And with just 10 seconds into the second quarter, Alex, the Knights are going to have to think about all these fouls they are just committing so far away from the basket like you mentioned because every single time you know from here on out the the Saints are going to go get some free throws out of it first end of the one and one no good and Styles oh, absolutely <laughs> swatted Batson Jr. I mean as much volleyball as you can get on a basketball floor I mean, that was like Garrison Phelps level spike. He got up too quickly in a hurry. Will drive baseline, Will Batson Jr. Tries to spin it in, no good. Tip for the rebound, Estrada. Styles, he's gonna run, taking on four Saints. He lays it up, gonna get a foul call to head to the line for two. And that's just crazy, Styles Phipps. He's <laughs> taking on four <laughs> defenders down there, Alex. I mean, I don't even know how and you get the shot And knife and throw, out. too. Yeah. But that's what he kind of has to do right now. And Kenny White can't sub back in just yet with three fouls. And he's going to have to do a lot at the line, too, this season. You really have a feeling that teams are going to not try to let him have anything easy, especially around the rim. Yep. Got to earn your points. Earns one there. It's a one-point game, 17-16. Quinetta sophomore into the corner for a freshman. That's Postorino. Back to Batson Jr. Postorino. Now to Quinette. Ball movement around the perimeter. Now a dribble drive and a dish. It's been a help side defense. They found the open man. And Matura hits a lay in there. Three point game. Styles looking for somebody, and he's going to draw a blocking foul. That's at least the fourth foul that he is, maybe even the fifth foul that he's drawn so far, and that's the sixth on the Saints. Well, and like you mentioned, Alex, if Brady Posterino, who's just a freshman, if they're if the Notre, if the Notre Dame Saints are going to put him as the primary defender on Styles Phipps, you have to attack it every single time. You cannot let a freshman you know, get the best of you, especially if you're one of the best point cards in the nation, ranked the 25th best. Now both teams in the bonus. 
Knights will be in the regular bonus. Saints in the double. Just lost the basketball on the way up, did Styles. But it'll fall for the jump ball. Tie him up, and that'll be Saints basketball. You have a sense that maybe Styles doing a bit too much to start? Yeah, I, you know, I would say so, Alex. But unfortunately, in his mind, I'm sure he thinks that's what he has to do to win this game. And to some extent, that's, that's probably true. He has to score the ball for this Knights team to win. Hanson Jr. almost falls down, dribbled off of his foot. As A.J. Mundumba will dish it back. Back into Styles' hand, takes on a double team, makes a guy fall, fades away, it's short. Rebound goes to Quinnette. And right now it's a lot of stuff away from the basket for Styles. Fadeaways, you know, some, some really tough jumpers, and he's got to get, get going downhill towards the basket. It's forced another turnover. I've been, at least for, for expectations, looking at what they lost, pleasantly surprised with the stellar of the defensive play so far. Oh, for sure. Especially against a Notre Dame team that is legit. Styles gets blocked. It's trying to be saved from out of bounds, but off Batson Jr. Batson Jr., of course, according to AZ Central, the number 10 player in Arizona this year at the AIA ranks. Styles asking for a screen, looking for a double team. Looks to the corner. Look at that pass. Can't rattle it home. Good rebound by Estrada. Tries to fight for it back up. Never had a good handle. It. Gwinnett. That one's tipped out of bounds. Boys, Bellis and playing some really good defense. And Aaron Estrada, he's not going to get too many looks that are that good, especially off an offensive rebound. Got to hit, hit it off the glass. Make sure, make sure that counts because, like I said, there aren't going to be too many opportunities for other Knights to score besides and Styles Phipps. Into the corner off the dribble drive. No good on the three from Peterson. Styles with the basketball. He'll dribble. Between his legs, he gets buffed, no call. Shoves a man off him, hesitates in the air. Off the backboard, no good. Back into the hands of Gwinnett. Notre Dame defenders are seriously doing a great job against Dallas Phipps, and wow, they're gonna call him for, I believe it might be his third too, Alex. That'll be three on him, and I believe Gwinnett, yep, he's gonna get the and one and head to the line. I mean, it is a 21-16 game. And I'm not sure what exactly you do here if you're Coach Lopez because obviously Notre Dame knows Styles Phipps has three fouls. You have to attack him. You have to try to get him to pick up that fourth foul. And if you're head coach Luke Delariva at Notre Dame, you have to be telling your players, attack Styles Phipps as hard as possible. Looks like Nolan Brown going to get ready to check in for the first time. He will. He'll come in for Estrada. Styles going to stay in here. Of course, Styles, Phipps, and Kenny White with three fouls here. Still 5.34 to go in the first half. You know, it's almost like worst case scenario, yeah. Alex. Of if you would have told Coach Lopez, Kenny White, three fouls in the first, and Styles, three in the second, that would not be good. On Dumba, open look for three. That's back iron, no good. Maciel couldn't get positioning on the rebound attempt. Stafford gets it. And Gwinnett will drive. Styles with three fouls, playing strong defense, looking for it. And Batson Jr. will lay it in. And timeout Notre Dame. Well, Alex, here's the thing. If Styles is going to play with three fouls, he can't obviously be aggressive as he wants. He likes to go for steals. He likes to get in the passing lanes and try to jump balls. But if he has three fouls, he can't do that as much. So the rest of the St. Mary's Knights team, and I think that's why they bring in freshman Nolan Brown, they're going to have to bring in some other guys to, to play physical and to, to play aggressive. And I think they might take Styles out here quickly, working things around on that bench during the timeout. Wow, and this is a lineup, Alex, of all sophomores. Number 15 is going to check into the game. That's Joe Lavario. Joe Lavario, excuse me, four sophomores and one freshman, the one freshman Nolan being Nolan Brown, Brown. of course, yep. But oh, wow. This is just such a different team from last year, Alex, and that's what's going to happen for a Knights team that's, I don't want to say rebuilding because they obviously have some pieces that will still be coming back, but in this game, this is a very inexperienced team. Masiala Lindbaum, Brown with the basketball, working against that pressure. It is set up by Notre Dame Prep. Dumba double teams. 
Never dribbles, and that's either going to be an over the back. Nope, it's going to be a turnover. It leads to a layup on the other end. And who's going to take care of the ball, Alex? That's the main thing right, right now. Wontemba picks up the dribble, not across the timeline, finally gets it there. You can just tell right now, Alex, no one really wants to dribble the ball for the Knights. Wontemba, he's going to get... Draw a foul, I should say. Call is on the floor, so he'll shoot a one and one. But here's, here's the other thing for this night squad out there. You cannot pick up your dribble You know, after one or two dribbles. Styles Phipps is going to just get a quick breather and come back in for Joe Lavario. So obviously he will be able to help break that press. But, man, if you're Nolan Brown or, you know, <clears throat> Jella Be Jonah Bellison, excuse me, you got to be somewhat comfortable dribbling the ball and breaking the press. 10 point game, almost halfway through the second quarter. Gwinnett working on Brown, back to the corner. That's Delgado. All movement along the perimeter, back to Gwinnett. Delgado in the corner, he'll drive baseline. A lot of steps and in. Very quickly a 12 point ball game, Styles Phipps taking on two guys. He'll stop, free throw line jumper, that's that guy are no good. Maciel, he'll try the same thing off the rebound. It hits the front rim and rolls in. Even with the intent to really get out and run for St. Mary's, they haven't had a lot of open looks there. No. Yeah, no, there haven't been really any easy fast break layups. They've obviously had a couple of open threes for Kenny White early on that he wasn't able to convert on. But that's been it. Granetta floater, 38-18. 3.30 to go. Brown, no dribble in, right to Styles. Cross court, good ball movement, but nobody's ready to shoot. Maciel, dribble drive, floater in the lane, and one! Shot got tipped a bit on the way up, but it went through. Delgado will get called for the foul. St. Mary's back to the line, eighth team foul on the Saints. Well, like we said, Alex, someone has got to step up for this night's team, and Anthony Maciel with four quick points. That's going to be huge, especially in tonight's matchup. Like I mentioned, P.J. Lewis, Sedu Tambora, Caspian Jones, I believe is his name, all not playing. Neither is John Farendorf as well, another freshman who's on varsity. It looks like somebody stepped out of bounds off the inbound. I should say the rebound. Still a 10 point game. Knights will pick up full court. Peterson with the basketball, and he's guarded by Bellison. Lots of perimeter ball movement there. Good defense by Brown, but are they going to give him continuation on Man. that? They will. Anthony Batson Jr. takes it to the rack. Well, and if you're Nolan Brown, here's the thing. We have not seen Anthony Batson Jr. take a single jump shot yet, Alex. Maybe don't crowd him. Maybe leave him some space. You know, obviously don't leave him wide open, but let's, let's let him prove himself with, with a couple jump shots because if he's going downhill, no one out there with Aaron Estrada on the bench, he's going to check in. No one's going to check him. He's going to come in for Brown, I think. He was working on his left thumb. He's signaling that. He's going to head to the training table, I believe. We'll keep an eye on that. Another free throw for Batson Jr. He hits 33-20, the score. Into the corner, Bellison picks up his dribble. No open looks for Styles Phipps. He's had to work for everything he's gotten. He'll step back for a three, and he's going to get fouled. Three free throws coming for Phipps. Ninth team foul, and that's another one on Peterson. Well, here's the thing, Alex. You can't crowd the landing area. Obviously, they harp on that in the NBA, but still it's the same thing in high school to a lesser degree. You can't get underneath someone's feet. And that's exactly what Brennan Peterson that did there on that Styles Phipps three-point attempt. Short on that one. Kind of got out of his legs a little too quickly on the free throw. And that's his third miss from the line already. We'll hit that one, 12 point game. 
Still have not seen Kenny White since he picked up his third. Styles playing with three fouls. Kenny White, you know, he's just such an aggressive defender. Probably makes some sort of sense to keep him on the bench at least for a little bit longer. Peterson clears out the left side. He's going to drive on Bellison. Styles will help. Back into the lane, and that's an easy two. Styles going to try to push. Looks for an open man. Good dish. Maciel and the foul. A late foul call. They'll give him one more. That's about great Maciel? court vision right there, but a good cut by Maciel, exactly. Yeah, great pass from Styles, but you know, even so, these St. Mary's Knights, the other four players, they still have to get open, and that's something that they have had trouble doing with all these double teams that have that Notre Dame has sent Styles Phipps' his way. Free throw to try to cut the game to a 10-point deficit for the Knights. And that'll rattle home. Maciel, he's really impressed some varsity action. Yeah, he's looked good. Really long, lanky. Quinnette into the corner. Drives into the lane. Three ninths, but it's all over him. 37-25. Two minutes to go. Strata sets his screen. Styles splits two defenders, can't hit the three, and the rebound just swatted and taken away. Good back tap by Bellison behind the back dribble. Styles can't keep his dribble alive, and he is hacked. He'll get two free throws as the Knights in the double bonus. And once again, you can't go underneath a player, Alex. I know Notre Dame doesn't like that call, but there was one earlier that ended up being a jump ball for Notre Dame that, you know, just a scrum where everyone was kind of diving at people's legs. And number 10 there, the freshman, Brody P Posterino just found himself on, you know, the other end of that one. Styles misses another free throw. That's his fourth miss. I believe they're calling a delay of game warning there on Styles Phipps for <laughs> taking the ball and laying it in real quick. Not sure if he so maybe he's saying he told the ref that he thought it was a one and that's one. What that, that's what I thought as well. Yeah. Look at his second free throw. No good off the back iron. He misses both of them. Minute 40 to go. Diving in. Two free throws either way. I think they're going to get Bellison again. And that's just tough for Jonah Bellison. I don't want to guess, you know, his height or weight, Alex, but he he is he is losing that battle versus Bryce Quinnett, that's for sure. He's got a stocky frame, Quinnett that is. No miss a free throw. I mean, he's missed a decent amount of free throws too, though. Neither team has, has capitalized on what should be free points. Back into the double bonus. It's that. 13 point lead for Notre Dame Prep. Niles gonna get some screens, passes it airborne, gets it back, one dribble pull up. That one's pure. Got a sliver of a vision of the hoop and he made it. That's all he needs. Oh man. A little bit of a reach in foul on the drive and even the lay in that's on Laverio. Joe Laverio, he's one of those guys who and we watch play, play in the JV game, Alex. He looks to be the guy who can stretch the floor for this night squad right now. Free throw is good. That's Brennan Peterson. And Peterson, he's just a sophomore, six foot, 165 pounds. Scored 14 points a game last year. He hits both free throws. That's that scholarship offer from Oregon, as we mentioned earlier. He's guarding Phipps in the lane. Nice throw, and he finds it. Maybe starting to heat up a little bit, getting those legs of Notre Dame prep a little tired. Minute to go before the break. Wide open, Gwinnett for three. That one touches Twine. Leave him that open, he'll hit it. Styles, come stop. Lundumba back to Styles Phipps. Fights through. Dribble pull up. That one's going to fall in. He's heating up, Alex. I think we can say that. 
Six consecutive Six points. Six in a row, yep, three trips down the floor. Batson Jr., 30 seconds left, just about even with the shot clock and game. Now I think they're gonna try to hold for one final shot here. They'll have to get it off just before the buzzer. Peterson with the basket pull. 15 seconds. You know, if this is giving you flashbacks of the last time these two teams played, I wouldn't, I would say I agree. Driving into the lane with six seconds. Gwinnett makes the lay-in. Styles Phipps, three seconds. He's got to look at the clock. He's got to get one off. It's late. Not going to count. And that is going to send us to the half. Chris really escalated quickly in that second quarter. And the main idea, there's two of them. Foul trouble for the guards for St. Mary's and really the double teams that Notre Dame Prep is bringing Styles Phipps. Yeah, well, like you mentioned, Alex, number one, Kenny White and Styles Phipps both have three fouls. And that is tough for this Knights team to overcome because if they put lineups out there without either of those two guys, like we saw for about 30 seconds, you know, it's tough for a team to, to break a press for the team, excuse me, the St. Mary's Knights to break that press. And like you mentioned, number two, the, the double teams that Notre Dame was sending Styles Phipps' way, they were working early on, but then it almost seemed like they went away from it late in that second I, quarter. I was, that was my next question. Do you think they changed something up or was it Styles just really read reading the floor a little bit more. Of course, uh, right before that barrage, he had that nice dish to Maciel. Yeah, no, I mean, Styles Phipps, he's, he's been seeing the floor better as the game went on, but like you mentioned, I think Notre Dame went away from throwing two defenders at Styles, which is something I would not do. I would continue to send both and force him, force the ball out of his hands, force him to make the correct, des correct decision and find any sort of St. Mary's Knights player who can put the ball in the hoop besides him. St. Mary's also, when he is getting guarded and hounded on the ball, they're bringing an extra guy to set his screen. Is that maybe a bit too much in terms of, because you're bringing a third defender to come guard him when you're setting that screen. Notre Dame prep's been all out on his pressure. Yeah, you're talking about that double screen action yeah. that they've been running. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's if that's necessarily working for Styles Phipps. I think, see, here's the thing. If they have one defender on him, I think you send no screen. I think you just, just let, let him work. work. Yeah. If there's if they're if they're sending a second defender on him too, I mean that means I'm, somebody else is open on the floor. Exactly. Right? Someone needs to cut. Someone needs to find themselves themselves in a position to score. And we really saw that one time. Anthony Masiel found himself wide open in a good position. We saw another time Kenny White before he left the game get a nice backdoor cut. But that has to happen more regularly for the St. Mary's Knights to chip away from this 45 to 31 lead that Notre Dame has on them at halftime. We saw the outside shooting as well from other guys, name, not named Styles Phipps, but that was in the first quarter. Going to need some more outside looks to really thin out that defense. Yeah, you got to look for Jonah Bellison to maybe put the ball through the hoop from three. Possibly Joe Lavario if he's out there. He's got to look to shoot it. And I think Anthony Masiel, he might have hit one. A.J. Mwondamba has taken a couple, but none have gone through. So shot selection will be key in the second half for the Knights. We'll take a quick break, seven minutes and 30 seconds until the second half will get underway. Again, a 14-point deficit, 45-31. Here for the home team, the Notre Dame Prep Saints over the St. Mary's Knights.
Knights trail by 14 as we get ready for half number two here, Chris. Um, uh, first quarter was really back and forth trying to feel each other out, but that second quarter we talked about uh, right before we went to break about how the foul trouble and really the offense uh, for, for St. Mary's was funneled by that Saints defense. Yeah, and it's just a 14-point lead for the, for the Saints right now, Alex. It could actually be closer to 20 points with the yeah. amount of free throws they missed. The Knights are almost lucky to escape the first half with just a 14-point deficit. St. Mary's will start with the basketball. Kenny White back on the floor. He's going to have to be careful. Three fouls in the first half, three fouls in the first quarter for Kenny White. Same starting five for St. Mary's. Looks the same as well for Notre Dame. Middle lane, a good pass there from Kenny. Estrada goes up with a jump ball. A little timid down on that post. Yep, you got to make a decision and you gotta gotta commit to it, Alex. And especially if you're a big man, you cannot take your time in the paint. It's set up pressure. Batson Jr. on the right wing. Gwinnett will calm things down. They'll get that perimeter ball movement working. He sees an open look for three. Gwinnett as it rattle home, rim, backboard, rim, and in. Styles to the corner, Mundumba. He'll try a baseline and lay it in. You'd like to see him get going at some point here. That's a junior, a long pressure, and the foul. Second foul on AJ. Someone's just got to get back on defense and help him because you cannot let Anthony Batson Jr. get going downhill. He's going to finish strong or he's going to get contact and get to the line. In this instance, he does both. Long pass to Kenny White in the corner. Back up to Estrada. Styles fits from the volleyball line. No good. And we're going to get a travel as two Saints run into each other. It's an interesting idea to get some more movement for St. Mary's there, but that's just too deep a three. Yeah, especially as your first shot out of halftime. 18-point game, St. Mary's inbound. Styles Phipps asking for one more, but a nifty finish. If Phipps can get in that painted area, you know, he's pretty good about finishing. But if he's going to be taking those volleyball line threes, he better be you know, on, on some sort of hot streak. Because, man, you don't see him taking that many threes. We've never seen him take that this many threes in a game in his first two seasons. Kenny White kicks to the corner after he drives baseline back into Maciel. Out for Estrada, Kenny White drives baseline again. Steps back, way too long. That might just be a result of him sitting on the bench for essentially one and a half quarters, Alex. He hasn't seen the floor in so long. It's about 45 minutes. Yeah. Left wing now for Quinnett, driving on Kenny. Kenny goes straight up, it's missed. Fight for the rebound, goes Estrada's way. White will push, around the back, drives in, fouled, and he'll head to the line. Another foul on Batson Jr. And the first on the Saints this half. Got to continue to attack the paint if you're the Knights, especially because this team, as it's currently constructed, is not really a three-point shooting team, Alex. I know Kenny White and Styles Phipps can convert on threes, but you know I'm not sure either of them are dead eye shooters. And even if they were, it's not like they're getting tremendous looks at the oh, rim they're not, either. Yeah, no, so the, the tested and yeah, they're they're not leaving them open, Alex. You know they've done their homework. They know that Kenny White and Styles Phipps are going to be the main two guys on St. Mary's taking the field goal attempts. Isles off the miss, back out to Maciel for three. There's some knockdown shooting. Back to a 12-point deficit. Knights will have a chance to pick up full court after the main. It's a big possession there after the free throws. Hatson Jr., they'll trap. Styles tips up top on the guard. Little floater, no good. Missing that one, Peterson. St. Mary's looks to run. Styles will slow it down. He'll drive to his left, steps back for three. Not a lot of rotation on that shot, but Mundumba gets the board. Shot fake, one dribble pull up. That one's good. St. Mary's in the rhythm. 
All of a sudden, a 10-point game, Alex. This is what the doctor ordered if you, for the Knights. An 8-0 run for St. Mary's. That allows them on the make to set up some of that pressure and slow the advance. 25 on the shot clock, it's Quinnette. Saints are gonna try to slow it down and run an offensive set, directly attacking Kenny White. And that is gonna be four on Kenny if they call it. Driving baseline, it was a backdoor cut and Aaron Estrada just let him go back door and kinda put Kenny in a tough position there. You either gotta take that foul or allow the way. You just gotta get out the way. Alex, you, you know, if you're Kenny White, you have to know that you can't pick up another foul in this third quarter, if possible. Saints still have not been able to commit very regularly at the free throw stripe. It's Tim Matura. This is the first. And a 10 point game, 8 0 run for St. Mary's. And they're going to leave, Coach Lopez is going to leave Kenny White in the game, Alex. One more foul, and he is done for the night. And they miss both, but they fight for the rebound. It's going to go to Batson Jr. Another fight for the board, and it goes to the Knights. And he was open, but Styles had two guys in his way. Turns around, throws one up, no good. Out of bounds, we will stay here. A lot of uh, bounces going the St. Mary's way to start this half, Chris. Yeah, I don't want to call him lucky, but the ball is finding the Knights, that's for sure. And oh man. Styles Phipps, I think he's going to have to check out because maybe a, a cut right above his knee. He'll wipe it off. And th that was pointed out by a uh, Saints player as well because they know that you know, if you draw blood, you got to come off the floor at least to get some attention. And they're going to make him come off as Bellison's going to check in. Athletic trainer will come over to look at him, and Styles is just going to tape himself up anyway. Never mind. He tried. That's Why what not? I would do if I were if I were him. Let me do it myself. Get back on the floor as quickly as possible. And Coach Lopez is going to call a timeout there. He, Wise I don't decision. Think he, I don't think he used one in the first half, so he has plenty of them left. Yep. Allow him to get. Uh, taped up a little bit. They're taking their time down there in the corner. They still have not put anything on that left knee. Yeah, let's get moving over there, Alex. We've turned into doctors. We're usually referees, but now we're doctors. <laughs> hey, well, here's the thing, Alex. We both will be referees this season. I've been one for oh boy. probably the last six years, but I'm going to get Alex a nice gig on the, <laughs> on the weekends. Best refing crew in the state of Arizona coming to you soon. Alex Coyle and Chris Ferrandorf. Those second grade girls coaches better watch out. Yeah. Styles taped up. Looks like they went with black tape on him. And he'll I come back in. We will we'll have to check back in though. He has not gone to the scores table, I don't think. He styles Phipps, Alex. He just does what he wants, okay? If he wants to be in the game, he's in the game. <laughs> I'm not totally sure what's going on over there. Co Coach Lopez, uh, he's had a long dialogue with those officials in that corner, so making sure that they got everything good. Styles turns around up the inbound, yes, and one! Sir. He banked it in, and the only person on the floor that can do that, his name's Styles, even if he has a bloody knee. Well, Alex, I've, That's been, just athleticism. I've been to some of the training sessions with Styles Phipps, and he practices those bank shots every single day. Chance to make it a seven point game. What a big run this is for St. Mary's. Already it's a 10-0 run. Styles will make it an 11-0 run for the Knights. And Coach Stella Riva not happy with his team and not happy, happy with the officiating right now. Yeah, he's suddenly become pretty vocal, Alex. They just do get it across and that almost a backcourt violation. 23 seconds to shoot, Quinette with the basketball. Directing traffic, Batson Jr. looks for three. That one had no chance. Styles, good pit dish up to Kenny White. He'll drive, turns around, puts it up, no good. Rebound to Strada, and they're going to call a foul on big number zero. Even if they didn't call that a foul, it's one thing we've talked about with Bear Cherry 
When you get that rebound, he's a big guy. Go straight back up. Don't bring it down when you don't need to. Yeah, don't bring it down and don't even attempt to dribble, Alex. You either go straight back up or you find another Knights player, preferably one that can handle the rock. Still an 11-0 run for St. Mary's. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Red tip. Where are we going to go with the ball? It'll be Saints ball. Tipped off Siles Phipps. So that was number 10. The freshman, Brody Posterino, you want to get up in his business as much as possible, get him as uncomfortable as possible throughout this game. Miscommunication on defense allows an open three. It's no good. Now we've got numbers going this way. Kenny White lays it in with the left hand. 13-0 run makes it a five-point game. Wow, what a second half so far for this Knights team. Knights on a crusade against the Saints. Green up top, back out, another corner three look. That one's gonna be long. Styles, right, another rebound for him. He's gonna dribble through. Tries to go through the lane. He'll step back for a jumper. Back rim, no. Tried to go off that backboard. Corner three for Kenny White. Bang! Three point game, we've got a timeout. 16-0 run for St. Mary's. Oh man, I wasn't sure if it could be done, Alex. We just have not seen this team play together and. That starting group of Aaron Estrada, Styles Phipps, A.J. Mundumba, Kenny White, and Anthony Maciel have really put together a nice stretch in this third quarter. All of that in under four minutes, and you can kind of feel the, the momentum shift. Maybe another guard just walked in, K.P. Brown, right before that run ignited. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can attribute it to, to K.P., but That's man. State he, champion right there, sitting yes. front row behind the Knights bench. Yeah, he, he might be giving some words of wisdom down there, but man, this Knights team, they're all huddled up, arms around each other. They are going to come out of this timeout looking for anyone to get them a bucket. You know, they've got three guys mentioned with Division I offers, Anthony Batson Jr., Bryce Quinnett, and Brennan Peterson. Probably one of those three will have to be the one to get it done. We're going to set up a press break here. St. Mary's going with the zone look. It's been mostly Quinnett's game of those three. And a guy wide open underneath the basket. Instead, they'll reset. 25 seconds on the shot clock. Atson Jr. back up top. That perimeter ball movement's been working. Now they get the penetration. Backdoor cut. Somehow allowed through three guys to lay in. That'll end the 16-0 run. Styles looking to start another. He had Kenny wide open. Bumped off on the cut. No foul call. will go the other way. Just a little miscommunication there on the throw out of bounds. Yeah, if you're Aaron Estrada, you just got to seal that Saints defender as hard as possible. As you know, Styles Fipsy, he's going to rifle one into you at least one time a game. Also, maybe even looking for Kenny White drifting over to the corner. And he'll set up the press again. Four point game. Looking for a foul there. He went up for the contact, but Stafford makes the lay in anyway. Quick 4 0 run for the Saints since that timeout. Estrada dribbling along the three point line. His pass finally finds Styles. Pirouette somehow taking on three defenders. Finds White. He'll drive baseline. He's tripped up. Styles Phipps will get himself in a corner and somehow get his way out of it. My goodness. But a good find as well, moving without the basketball, Kenny White. Yeah, Styles shifts. He's got essentially no room in that corner and finds a way out every single time. Three guys on him, too. Yeah. Into Estrada. Fresh 35. Estrada, he'll drive. He'll lay it in. It's a strong move. It's a confident move, most importantly, Chris. Something we didn't see in that first half. Now Batson, probably a good foul up there on Marcial. Well, Batson, he, I've mentioned this before, but when he commits to going strong, he goes strong to the hoop. But other than that, when he when he gets the ball on the perimeter, you know, in Notre Dame's set offense, it's not like he's necessarily looking to score 24-7. And once again, I'd love to see St. Mary's force him to take a jump shot. To my recollection, I don't think he's been able to hit any that he's forced up there. Let's hit the free throw, it's a five point game. 
The shot looks nice. We just haven't seen it along the perimeter at all. Two for two for the line, something the Saints have struggled to do. Get it up to Styles from White. Tries to split a double team. It'll stay right here. So you think that's something maybe St. Mary's can go to, having Kenny bring up the ball and have Styles play a little more off? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why not, especially because the Saints are not going to send two guys at Kenny White. Strata goes strong but loses the basketball. Quinnett into the lane, tripped up. I think that's going to be on the ground by Estrada. It should be. And they're going to call that. Nope, they're going to give it to Maciel up top. Interesting. And that's Anthony Maciel's third foul as well, Alex. He's been a real big impact player so far in tonight's game, the sophomore in his first game of varsity action. This entire season, the Knights are gonna have to rely on a bunch of inexperienced players to give them some sort of production. Oh, I mean, how short. many free throws oh, yeah. has Bryce Quinette missed tonight? Seriously, he is letting the Knights off the hook. Averaged 16 points per game last year, was the 4A West Valley all-second team player as a sophomore. And he missed them both again. Estrada fighting for the rebound, he grabs it. Kenny White will bring it up again. Styles Phipps playing off the ball. Double screen up there. Kenny has his pass stolen, steals it right back, tries to go over the top of Batchin Jr. He can't do so. Wide open leak out, and that's Fiegels. Now back outstretched to an eight point game. Styles Phipps bumped in a foul call. That'll be number four on the Saints. Still a minute left, third period, third quarter, I should say. That's number four, Will Fiegels. He's just a sophomore as well. This Notre Dame team is, is very young. Anthony Batson's going to check out the game. So if you're St. Mary's, if you're Styles Phipps, you want to attack the paint because he's really stymied a couple St. Mary's drives recently. Much smaller lineup defensively for Notre Dame. Free throw line jumper. He gets the rattle home. Six-point game. Knights back to the full court. Gwinnett barely across in time. Wide open lane, sees kind of parked there. They're gonna get a foul on Mundumba and Stebbins still headed the line for two. Well the thing is, it almost seems like every single time Notre Dame attacks the paint, they're getting to the line, Alex. And I know St. Mary's wants to challenge every shot, but at some point, you just got to commit to going up straight and forcing the refs into not calling a foul. I didn't catch who that was on. If that was on Anthony Moscow, that would be his fourth. Okay. AJ. Free throws made. A lot of subs for this Notre Dame team right now. I'm not sure if number 32, Matt Delgado, or number 24 who's at the line, that would be Car uh, Hayden Stebbins. They haven't really been in tonight's game too often. You've got to attack these guys off the dribble. Friendly bounce on the free throw there. It's in both. Another substitution as Stafford will check in for the free throw shooter. Styles back on the ball. He'll bring it up. 30 seconds to go. Shot clock has been turned off. Third quarter, eight point game. And off in the corner, it's a baseline jumper that does not fall. Gwinnett looking to push, 18 to play in quarter three. They're gonna take this last shot, Alex. There's no reason not to. Up there to Patterson, nine seconds, gets a screen. Too fancy with the dish, four seconds. Kenny White, three seconds, he's gonna go for a lay-in and it hits. That is a huge play, you can circle that. Just a six point deficit, that's an plus eight in that third quarter, Chris, for the St. Mary's Knights. Yeah, Alex, and how big of a factor is having Kenny White in for an entire quarter? Man, does he open up the floor. He really plays well off of Styles Phipps, and we mentioned that chemistry that they developed this summer, but to see it in extended action is, is something special for this Knights squad. And he played well with four fouls 
especially on the defensive side of the basketball. All right, you, you kind of see that you know that your work early in that first quarter, your, your lumps you took in the second quarter paid dividends, and some of the tired legs on that Saints bench quarter three. What are we looking for here quarter four? Well, Alex, you have to be looking for that same action that the Knights have been running with Kenny White, getting Styles Phipps the ball with Aaron Estrada, having the ball and, and setting almost a, a handoff screen for Styles Phipps to get open. He's had a couple semi-open jump shot looks off of that action. If, if I'm Coach Damon Lopez, I'm, I'm getting Aaron Estrada the ball. I'm using some sort of handoff mechanism to get Styles Phipps open for a mid-range jumper. Teams back out to the floor here for the fourth quarter. First to have to mention dif different looking uh, coaching staff this year for Coach Lopez as well. Simon Phipps has joined the staff as the lead assistant. Well, that's Styles Phipps, his father. Doing some extra coaching in that huddle with Simon in that between period action. I'd start with the basketball. Double handoff up top. Styles turns around. He'll do it again. Tough shot, can't make. Nice job by the Knights to get back, stop the ball. Might see the Saints possibly try to slow things down a bit here. Lead by six. It's a lot of steps there. That's the thing, Alex. They can slow it down too much, though, because of the new 35-second shot clock that has been being debuted across the AIA this season. Quinette in the lane, and again, Chris, you talked about it first quarter. The official furthest away from the basketball calls that foul. That should be illegal. You should not be allowed to do that. If you blow your whistle and you're the farthest guy away from the basket, I think you should have to like sit in a timeout box like, like hockey or something like that. There's gotta be some sort of rule to, pre to prevent this, Alex. The timeout box, uh-huh. Quinnette free throw, oh. hits that one. Whatever it's called, Alex, I don't know hockey. Grew up in Arizona, cut me some slack. Two great hockey programs, playing in one venue, Chris. Shameless plug. Quinnette makes both. Styles Phipps. Oh, that was a foul there on Fiegel. That'll be team foul number five of the Saints. Fiegels has done a good job guarding Styles Phipps all game. I'm, well, he must be in foul trouble now with him taking him, him out, but. But back in the freshman, Posterino. Posterino, you want to attack him too. Batson Jr. is back on the floor to start this fourth quarter, should note that. Styles, cross court pass. A lot of passes in the air. Batson Jr. goes up and meets Estrada. It's not a battle you want to pick if you're seeing Mary. No, he's just too athletic. Under seven to go. Quinnette on Maciel. Floater's good. Eight point game. I should say 10 point game, 65-55. Styles knifing through two guys. Dishes to Kenny, great backdoor cut, rewarded with two. Nice find there from Styles Phipps and even better finish in traffic from Kenny White. Hatson Jr. on the right wing. He's doubled, bounce pass to Quinnette. He'll drive in and came down with those arms, did Maciel. Yep, and that might be his fourth. And they're not gonna announce it, so I guess we're all gonna be wondering how, just how many that is, but if he comes out the game, he's been in a real integral part of this St. Mary's comeback in the second quarter, second half, excuse me. Gwinnett will hit, they'll bring in Delgado back in. Comes in for Matura. And Estrada will check out as Jonah Bellison will check back in. Smaller lineup for the Knights. 6.28 to go. And Bellison's gonna be on the floor to hopefully be able to space it a little bit. Hopefully knock down a three as he did early on in tonight's game. Styles, he's doubled, almost to that corner. Did a nice job to avoid the travel. A lot of contact, but a good finish there by Mundumba. And it's gonna sprint back on defense. Set up that pressure, Batson Jr. doubled in that right wing. Now it's Quinnette. 
White has to avoid the foul. Blown up. Easy charge call every day of the week. Twice on Sundays, Chris. It's a nice play, and that's a ballsy play from Anthony Maciel there, Alex. Seriously. I think he's one foul away from, from sitting on the bench for the rest of tonight's action. It's a big call, too. A chance for St. Mary's to get back within six. And I think we're going to get an off-ball foul here. It's holding him. It's and number that's going to send... Styles to the free throw line. I of course, don't want him to get open, especially off the ball. You're going to learn some way, Alex, as a freshman. It's tough to guard Styles Phipps. He's just so quick, even when he doesn't have the ball. You almost instinctively want to put your hands on him to slow him down. Run into the one and one, and it's short. Line for the board, Styles has missed at least six free throws today. Left wing three, back iron, no. Bellison couldn't grab that rebound. Back to Quinette, fresh 35. Styles with three fouls, has not gotten a foul. Now Quinette dribbles the ball out of bounds. Looking for the foul call, now he's gonna hold his elbow. That's great defense from Styles Phipps and then the seal by Kenny White. Eight point game, 5.40 to go. Styles thinks about finding for three. Wide open pass. Great flyby. AJ Mundumba. Calm presence there in the lane. Six point game, Alex. The Knights are going to have to get some stops. Hopefully, a couple consecutive ones if they want to get this game all the way down to a one position. Styles possession. is steal. Headed the other way. Good in out dribble. He's going to think about three. Instead, gets to Kenny White. He's in the corner. Working baseline. Throws it out of bounds. Good work and momentum there, but uh, maybe trying to be a little too much of a selfless player. And you got to know who you're looking for there in the corner. That's Jonah Bellison. He's not going to be able to go up top and bring that down. Just about five to go, six point game. Into the lane, now out to the corner. Quinette back to the lane. He missed, trying to go up and under. Good late contest by Maciel. Long three from Styles. That's pure. Three point game. That will get the St. Mary's crowd involved. It's a one possession ball game with 4.30 to go. This is big right here. Wanted to shoot for Notre Dame. Into the corner. Good help defense that time by Mundumba. He's guarding Batson Jr. They fake a screen. He's going to drive in. Danny White, good defense, and avoids his fifth foul. Behind the back. Styles for three. No good. He pulled up from the volleyball line yet again. It's a heat check. Had a little bit more room, and we're going to get a whistle for an injured player. That's Brennan Peterson. He's holding that left calf. Yeah, hopefully just a cramp. That's Looked like he might have gotten bumped on a knee to that calf as well. Don't want to speculate anything, but he'll come off the floor. And that's a, a big player to come off the floor, especially offensively. Yeah, 14 points per game last season as a freshman. He is also a 4A West Valley second team member of this Notre Dame squad from last year. Notre Dame with the basketball, trying to inbound it. Kenny White, good defense, gets a tip. 404, one possession game. That's Brody Posterino passing in the ball. A freshman, Alex, he might just be overthinking it just a tad. Gets it into Quinette. Let's pick up full. Trying to set the trap. Picks up his dribble. Where's he going to go with the ball? Throws it to Maciel. He finds Styles Phipps into the lane, to the corner for the tie. It's good! Things are starting to work for the Knights. And we got a timeout all at 67. And watch out. We've got a chawing match between Della Riva and an official. A long leash, no T. 67 all. Alex, it feels like, it, like we're playing in Bull Gymnasium here. This St. Mary's faithful is loud and they are proud tonight. And man, Della Riva is just John at the official. Instead of coaching his team, he's gonna swat at the ref. Back to settling like, things down. Like you said, a long nights, leash, though. Alex. I mean, we've seen Coach Damon Lopez pick up technical fouls for, <laughs> for a lot less than that. If you were here for the JV game, I mean. Oh, baby, technical fouls flying left and right. 
You would have thought we were playing for the state, state championship. <laughs> a lot of energy out there. All right, 340. That's a good thing. Yep, for sure. 344 tied at 67. That full court pressure, especially with some of the guys off the floor, starting to, you know, put some indecision into the minds of the Saints. Yeah, Brennan Peterson, he's going to take a seat again. He's the guy with the Oregon offer, and man, he's been a he's been solid handling the ball for this Notre Dame squad. It's it's gonna, you know, those duties are gonna fall on Bryce Quinn and then whoever else can help him. Maybe Brody Posterino, maybe Will Fegels. We'll see. Posterino will try to inbound. He's gonna be able to go side to side and get it across in the break. Picking up the dribble, lots of long cross court passes for the Saints. Twenty five to shoot. 3.30 to go. We're tied at 67. Miles Phipps. That's in junior. Loses the ball on the spin move. Keeps the dribble. Wendumba, he'll pick him up. Screen coming. 10 seconds to shoot. Bats in junior. Now working on Maciel. Pump fake. Dribble drive. And going to get a foul called off the ball. Who are they going to call it on if that's... They were pointing at Kenny White for a second. I got a little worried, but uh, that's going to be on A.J. Mundumba instead. I believe that's his fourth. Just three seconds left on the shot clock, Alex. That foul will send him to the line, so that'll reset no matter what. Okay. Forgot they but were again, in the, the free bonus throw line. The free throw line hasn't been very pretty. No, and I'm not sure if we've seen Nicholas Stafford at the line yet, but more importantly, Brennan Peterson just subbed back into the game. One and one here for the Saints. Touched every bit of the rim. Goes in, he'll get another. It gives Notre Dame prep lead right back. Knights have not led since the first quarter. Not the Burnett that time. Still a one possession game. Styles with the ball to bring it up. Maciel, wide open for three, top of the key, rims out. Right for the rebound, Kenny had to pull back because he's got those four fouls, three to go. Ellison on the ball, now it's Quinnett. Started by Kenny White. They're gonna run this down, they're gonna run the shot clock as far down as possible, Alex. 2.30 to go, 11 to shoot. Screen from Batson Jr. They don't communicate on the top and the floater is gonna fall. They're gonna get it in, it's a two possession game, 71-67. Styles with the basketball, one on one for him. A little floater in the lane, no good. Can he get his own miss? They're gonna call a foul on Styles Phipps. That'll be four on him, nope, they're gonna give it to somebody else. Nope, they will give it to Styles. I was going to say, if they give it to someone else, it wouldn't have really made much sense. But yeah, that's him, Styles, and Kenny White, both four fouls, so one away from fouling out of tonight's action. Two minutes and ten seconds left to play in this game, and Anthony bats into the line. Some big free throws here. He'll get two. Makes the first anyway. seen Aaron Estrada in the ball game in quite some time. Going with this lineup is Coach Lopez. Six point deficit. Styles is doubled. Gets a hit out of his hands. Hit out of his hand again. Quinette. Styles with four fouls has to lay off. That foul is going to go on Bellison. It better be on Bellison because Styles is nowhere near that play. It will be on double ones. It's four on him. Just under two to go. And with how Notre Dame has been converting at the line late in this one, you do not want to send him there. This is a classic announcer jinx for you, Alex. You're welcome. <laughs> Keep that one in the back pocket. Gonna need that quite a bit the rest of the way. How about another one? We don't normally see guys go 0 for 2, especially on a Notre Dame prep team that's known for pretty good free throw shooters, shooters in general. 
They avoid it there. Seven point game. Styles pulls up for three, rattles it home. My goodness. Coach Lopez was asking for a timeout. He gets one. That is a big three acrobatics in the air. Good body control from Styles. Man, yeah, I'm not sure how he gets those to fall, Alex. He just pulls up and you're sitting here thinking, why in the world is he taking that shot? But and then it'll remind you about a half second later when it goes through. Yep. Four point game here. The Knights are gonna have to come out of this, get a good defensive possession settled down because Man, recently they have been sending the Notre Dame Saints to the line fairly often. And unless it's Bryce Quinnett who's had a tough time tonight, you really don't want to do that. Back to a four point game though. Each team will be in the bonus. Of course, the Saints in the double bonus, Knights in the one and one. The Saints ball and that time out. Allows Coach Lopez to draw some things up, but also set up that full court pressure. Minute 45 on the clock. Gwinnett will run the baseline, hits it in. I set that trap, they get it across. Batson Jr., he's gonna go in. And they call a foul on Maciel. I think that'll be four on him. And I'm just not sure what, what else he's really supposed to do there, Alex. He didn't bring his arms down. He jumped straight up. He challenged the dunk. If it is a foul, it's a good foul, but I didn't see much contact there. It just kind of seemed to me like Anthony Batson Jr. went up out of control and completely lost the ball midair. He tried to poster a guy. I haven't seen any dunks today. That's abnormal of the recent history of St. Mary's. You'll get some guys back at some point. Alex will be able to dunk Sadu Tambora and Caspian Jones both sitting on the end of the bench tonight. Free throw, five point game. That's just it, five St. Mary's players, varsity players currently not playing in tonight's game. Styles Phipps, Knights trail by six. Good gather, control, lays it in with the right hand. Back to a four point game. Minute 30 to play. Oh man. And a foul called. This is a guy that uh, has had Coach Lopez at his back hip talking and asking reasons why. And another foul and another guy. I think that's gonna be four on him. Five maybe. Otherwise, I'm just not sure why Joe Lavario's coming in right now. Fifth foul, yes, he had four previously. Correct myself there. Two shots coming. Man, to, at the line. to call one like that, Alex, I mean, they always say ball don't lie, whatever, but to call one all the way back there, he didn't have his hands wrapped around him. I don't even know if he was really preventing him from getting Must the have been off ball. Pass. I didn't see much. It's the second, five point game, 77-72. Styles directing traffic, corner three, Kenny White! He's catching fire! Timeout, Coach Lopez, two point game. Oh baby, man, I mean, Kenny White, if he just could have stayed in the game for a little bit longer, Alex, I think we would have seen a different outcome. You know, the Knights were down, I believe, 20 points at one point during this game, and they have crawled all the way back two-point deficit. I'm not sure if they ever took the lead, though, Alex. Remind me. They have not led since that 4 nothing lead. All the way back after the Styles Phipps and won three to start the game. They trailed by 18 right out of the halftime locker room. Then a quick 16-0 run to cut it to two. Yeah. They've tied the game since, got back down by 10. They've now within two, 77-75. That pressure, it's been working. It's at least sped up the Saints a little bit. But now, even with the shot clock in play, they can take the air out of the basketball a little bit and get it to under a minute to go. Yep, I'm sure Notre Dame is going to want to take as much time off as possible. Once they get it past half court, it would not surprise me if they settle down into one of their sets. It's a different look for St. Mary's here, picking up full court. More of a man-to-man, -man. at least they're going to 
man on Peterson. He gets the basket ball. Minute 15. Still not across. 29 on the shot clock they do with Peterson. That's Joe Lavario there on Brennan Peterson. He's got the least amount of fouls on the floor. That's probably a big reason why. Now they switch to Kenny White. 15 to shoot. Minute to go. Two-point game. Timeout. Called by Notre Dame Prep with 12 to shoot. It's really going to come down to this possession, Alex. And you got to have the feeling, too, Notre Dame Prep, uh, they've got, I think, each team with one timeout left. So next time down the floor, they could do that same thing, call a timeout, and then just drop an inbounds play like they're going to do here. 57 on the game clock. And if I'm Notre Dame in a half-court set, I understood why they gave the ball to Anthony Batson going full steam ahead coming out of their last timeout, but... Coming out of a half-court set, I have to imagine you want Bryce Quinette or Brennan Peterson to be the one handling the rock and then maybe initiate a, a pick and roll with Anthony Batson. That's what I would go with, at least if I was head coach Luke Delariva. Something simple coming out of this and getting a, a pick and roll with two of your three best players. Tell you what, though, Chris, if you told Coach Lopez coming into this game without five varsity players for various reasons... Taking a very, very good Notre Dame prep team under a minute. One, one of the best teams game. in the state. I mean, yeah. both, of these, both of these teams are arguably top 10, top 15 programs this year. They get the inbound, 10 to shoot now. Batson Jr., he's trapped, gets it back out. They want to travel into the lane. A big lay-in there, and that's a role player, Delgado, with two. 45, Styles for three, thinking it. Heat check time. Tip around for the basketball. Another outlet out. Fiegels lays it in with the finger roll. 36 to go. Nice trail by six. Tipped up on the pass. Scrum for the ball. Batson Jr. will slam it home, and that could be an exclamation point on this game. Kenny White wide open and in the corner, but instead we're going to get a blocking foul. Sends Styles to the line, a one and one. And just a defensive lapse coming out of that timeout from the St. Mary's Knights. A, like you mentioned, a literally wide open layup for Matt Delgado. He's not going to miss that. And then some sloppy passing, a lot of passing in the air that's just hanging up. Yep. That's probably going to do the Knights in. But like you mentioned, Alex, five guys out. Three starters, or who we would project to be starters, and Sadu Tambora, Caspian Jones, and PJ Lewis. And then you've got Julian Morales coming off the bench, John Farendorf, another freshman. Um, Styles misses the front end, and we're going to get a jump ball that should stay. No, it's going to go to Notre Dame prep. 20 seconds left. But Alex, just to end on my thought, you know, you tell anyone on this St. Mary's Knights team that. They were within a couple points of beating a very, very good Notre Dame prep team. I think they're taking it. Interesting that he took that one up. The shot clock was turned off. A little bit of life left. One dribble pull up. Foot was on the line. No good anyway. And now five seconds to shoot, and they're going to call a foul. Yeah, that's dumb. Kenny White <laughs> will shoot a three with four seconds I to mean, go. That's just basketball IQ. Bryce Quinnett, he's played a really good game tonight. But and I'd say not a foul. I didn't see contact there at all. No, it was probably just, you know, he, he happened to be in the, the area space of, of Kenny White. Still, you want to, if you're Styles Phipps, I know you want to have a couple of those free throw attempts back from early on in that first half, Alex. Be a very different game, that's for sure. Missed at least seven if you count that front end of the one and one and a chance at an eighth. So White hits the first of three. You can cut this to a five point deficit but four seconds remain. And there goes Delgado to, <laughs> to the bench. He was the one who took up that last layup. Not really sure the point in, in yeah, that no. at this point. There's, There's 17 no seconds to go. And he misses on purpose, trying to get a rebound, and that'll do it. Hard-fought game goes the way of the Notre Dame Prep Saints. Six points separate these two teams. It's a really good basketball game that came down to the wire. St. Mary's without three starters, as we mentioned.
You have down three starters, but you know, still a great game. A heroic effort there from Styles Phipps. Like we mentioned, Kenny White, man, did he make a big difference in that second half, but unfortunately, just those quick three first quarter fouls did not help him or this St. Mary's Knights team at all. That's something you're gonna have to watch for this Knights team going forward the rest of the season is these, these guards, Kenny White and Styles Phipps, can they stay out of foul trouble early? What did we learn though about some of the supporting cast around those two? Well, yeah, I mean, Anthony Maciel, he had a great game. You know, I wasn't sure what to expect out of him. I wasn't sure if he could space the floor. I believe he had two threes and he just found himself in the right space at the right time on a couple of those Styles Phipps passes. And besides him, we saw Jonah Bellison at least knock down one three and play some, some nice defense. Um, Aaron Estrada, big step forward for him from compar comparing him to last year. You know, he made just a couple of moves down low, but just a defensive presence and his yeah, rebounding yeah. Were, were really felt in tonight's game. And you think you get Sadu Zimbora back, you get Cash back, you get PJ back, you get a number of other players back as well for a schedule that does not get any easier. No. You got Brophy, you got a couple of out of state opponents, you got Milton here as well. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Some out-of-state tournaments, Tark Classic, Damian Classic. Um, Hardest schedule in the state, by, arguably. By far. But, again, you have to feel like there's a little bit of, even though you come away with the loss, and, and I at this point I really don't like playing you know, moral victory here, but 83-77, you put up a lot of points yeah. in a game like this. No, yeah. I mean, early on we did mention that the Knights – they kind of had trouble getting the ball in the basket. They were looking in the first quarter for anyone who was going to step up besides Styles Phipps with Kenny White on the bench. And you know, we mentioned a couple of guys were able to do that. But in you know St. Mary's, they have a couple of weeks before their second game. Um, you know, on December second, it's going to be versus Regis Jesuit at Brophy College Preparatory. But They've got a couple weeks to get it together. they got a couple weeks to get back all five of their other varsity players. Like you mentioned, three projected starters, and that's going to be big time going forward for this night squad. They're going to look different, that's for sure. Yeah, these next four games, big tests. Of course, you got Regis Jesuit, as you mentioned, a week later, Hoopal West, Gray Collegiate, and Brophy. Then you got Milton. Those next four games are big. Then you get into some region play, and you know, we'll talk about the region, a uh, different region this year as, as the season goes along. But these next four games are big. You're going to find out a lot about your team. Oh, yeah, it's make or break, Alex. And, you know, St. Mary's, they like to schedule the toughest competition, not only in the state, of course, but in the country as well. And Coach Lopez likes to schedule those games early so that his team going down the stretch, playing Arizona teams are used to playing tough. They're used to playing physical, and they're going to have to do that to, to get some wins against those, those next three teams you mentioned. Four teams, excuse me. Quick recap of the game. St. Mary's scored the first four points of the game and never led after that. Of course, Styles Phipps, three fouls in the first half. Kenny White, three fouls in the first quarter. Had to sit the entire second quarter. St. Mary's at one point out of the halftime locker room yeah, about a minute in, they were trailing by 18. Brought it all the way back. A 16-0 run helped that. They tied the game back down by 10, down by 2. With under a minute to go, end up losing 83-77. Yeah, and it was just tough. You know, early on, Notre Dame, they did not convert on free throws. That's kind of what helped St. Mary's hang around. But late down the stretch, they really they really put it together. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. They, they might have went 10 for 10 down the stretch, Alex. As far as uh, my memory... Um, you know, serves me, but definitely a great game from the Notre Dame Saints. You come away from this, obviously, beating one of the top teams in, in the state. you got to feel good about yourself, but St. Mary's, you know, there's a lot to be had, and getting some guys back, that's the main key going forward, but like you mentioned, moral victories, yeah, they're good, but you'd like a win on the, on the records. Game one of this 2022-23 season, it goes in the books as a loss, 83-77 at Notre Dame Prepa. Very good team to follow along uh, to help some of the PowerPoints later on when it comes sure. tournament time. A new open division this year as well in Arizona. We'll talk about that plenty much more. But uh, thank you for joining us uh, again. Glad to be back for year three. Chris Ferendorf, I'm Alex Coyle. See you next time on We're SM Hoops YouTube Live.